welcome to this Bell Direct monthly update. I'm Julia Lee, an equity strategist at Bell Direct. And in February so far, it's been a good month for the Australian share market with a gain of 3.1% in the month to date so far. US stocks also having a good time hitting all time record highs this month. And it's interesting with the market refocusing in on earnings, we've seen some of those defensive sectors bouncing back quite strongly with the consumer staple sector up by 6.6% and healthcare up by 5.6%. And this is interesting because usually in a rising market, what you see is some of these defensive sectors underperforming, but some strong earnings and some signs of turnarounds coming through from this space, really helping to lift share prices. On the flip side, another defensive sector coming under pressure, and that's the telecom sector, which is down 2.2%, and the only sector to finish in the red for the month. That's due to Telstra's half-year earnings numbers, which really missed expectations and did see the share price tumbling down. But comparing the market on a large cap versus a small cap basis, and we have seen a reversal in some of the trends that have dominated over the last two years. Over the last two years, it's really been the medium cap and the small cap stocks that have outperformed, but we have seen a reversal in fortunes with the large cap stocks outperforming since Trump won the US presidency. And we've seen that trend continuing in the month of February as well. In fact, the top 20 blue chips on the Aussie share market up 3.5% for the month, almost doubling the performance, more than doubling the performance that we've seen in small caps, which has seen an increase of 1.6% for the month so far. In fact, some of the shines starting to come off those small cap companies with disappointing results, seeing share prices tumbling, tumbling for the likes of CSV, which is down 42% for the month to date so far, GBST, which is down 23%, Icentia, which is down 31%, Chen, which is down by 20%, and Ozforex, which is down 20% in February so far. Having a look at some of the top and bottom performers for the month, and let's start off with the good news. So we have seen seven holdings bouncing back strongly, up by 40% in the month to date. St. Barbara Mines also doing well, up 22%, and it has been a good month for gold miners in general. And Monadelphus in the mining services space, up by 22%. On the flip side, a continuation of the theme that we've seen from iCenter over the past year, and that is a disappointing earnings profile. iCenter dropping another 30% for the month to date. We've also seen some surprises coming through for both Worley Parsons as well as Genworth. Worley Parsons down by 19% on the back of its earnings report and outlook, and Genworth down 18%, mostly on the back of its weak outlook for the housing market and the market that it operates in, which is the mortgage insurance market for 2017. Having a look at half year earnings season, and we're more than halfway through now, uh, and generally it has been a good one for the Australian share market. In week one, it was Downer ADI, which outperformed the market in the ASX 200, but Aconex, which was one of the worst performing. In week two, the market saw a good bounce back with some strong results helping to lift the market. Simic surprising the market on the upside, and we did see the share price reaction being quite good there. But on the flip side, Genworth disappointing in its outlook. It was the worst performer in the ASX 200 that released an earnings report that week. In week three, we saw Boral outperforming while primary healthcare underperformed, but overall the market gaining another strong 1.5%. And this week, we're pretty flat, flat so far. Vocus outperforming, showing signs of a turnaround there and Icentra underperforming, continuing that week earnings themes. Having a look at some of the major themes that have emerged from this half year earnings season. First of all, property doing pretty well, but boosted by revaluations that we've seen from strong property prices in this sector. Housing in general remaining quite strong and boosting stocks like Nick Scarly, JB Hi-Fi, as well as Harvey Norman. And look, more fallen angels being added to the list Icentia, Genworth, as well, well as Worley Parsons seeing some pretty steep moves. On the flip, back, flip side, we have seen some of the fallen angels over the past year seeing a bit of a turnaround, and that includes stocks like Vocus, Fairfax, as well as Woolworths, which have had good share price performances. 
Some of the blue chip companies that have surprised on the downside include AMP, Brambles, as well as Telstra. But of course, commodities is what's driving a lot of the earnings per share growth. In the Australian share market, we've seen a strong rebound in profits from things like iron ore prices being up strongly, oil prices being up by 90% and coal prices also gaining in the past year. However, a lot of this is already baked into the share prices of the material stocks and we haven't seen a huge outperformance from material companies this earnings season. We've seen some strong dividend growth coming through though um, and a turnaround in terms of profitability for a lot of these resource type companies. I guess one of the things that we have seen is that we have started to see life in the mining services space in particular, Simic, Downer ADI and Monodelphus outperforming and surprising in terms of its outlook and looking like they've turned a corner. On the flip side, Wally Parsons, which is exposed to that oil and gas space, still doing it pretty tough. And finally, just ending with a one year chart of the Australian share market. You can see that the market is near 5,800 points at the moment, which is a resistance mark for the market. Market at these levels looking pretty toppy. And of course, if we can't surpass 5,800 points quite convincingly, we're back down to that support level once again. So the market looking like it might be primed for a pullback in March if we can't break that 5,800 point level on the upside convincingly. I'm Julia Lee, an equity strategist from Bell Direct. Hope to see you next month.